Hey, it's Mark from Ripple Training. So first of all, Happy New Year. It's my first video of the new year. And we just released a brand new plugin called RT Markups here at Ripple Training that lets you annotate video specifically designed for working with things like newspaper and articles and titles and things like that where you want to add highlights or underscore or redacting or scribbling out or scratching out or arrows, things like that where you want to mark up text. It's on sale for a limited time. Check out the link below. Now, on MacBreak Studio today, I thought I'd take you inside my process of developing one of these RT markups in Motion. And this is useful for you, especially if you've ever used Motion or considered using Motion in order to publish titles, transitions, effects, etc., for use in Final Cut Pro. Let's dive in. So if you want to highlight or underline or strike through or redact text, you need an animated line. And a simple way to do that is to create a paint stroke. So I'll use the line tool here, hold the shift key down, draw out a line, and let's go ahead in the properties and just reset its position parameters. So it's centered and in the shape, I'll just change it to black and make it wider. Let's say this is to redact. We could easily just change the color and the blend mode to make it highlight instead. Let's start it with a square at the beginning and end. And we've got our basic line. And to animate it, we can go to Shape and choose Right On. Move to, say, here, tap O. And we've got an animated line. So that's great, but you need a way in Final Cut Pro to adjust how long that is at a minimum. So what you can do over here in the Right On properties is adjust the end offset. So notice as I increase this end offset that it becomes shorter. So let's say I put it to there and we play that back and it's a shorter line. So that's great. And you could publish this ending offset and then call it something else like shorten the line. And that would work. And that would allow you in Final Cut Pro to create a line of a specific length. And of course you publish the color and the blend mode and the width and all those other things. And that's great. Uh, you could also publish its position and tie it to an on-screen control. But the problem is it's just one line. And often you want to underline or highlight or strike out multiple lines in an article, for example. And that means you need to stack these, which is fine. You can stack them in Final Cut Pro, but then you need to adjust the timing of each so they each come in at the right time. And it can just take a bit of work. So what I wanted to do with RT markups is figure out a way to have multiple lines inside of one title. Of course, you could duplicate this paint stroke and shift that duplicate down and move it over and take that duplicate and move it in time so that the animation happened after the first one. And then you probably want them at the same position. But this also gets messy because you want to make it easy for the user to adjust all of this together and adjust the spacing between them and the width of all of them. And it gets a little more complicated. So I looked at two other options. First of all, I thought maybe I could use text. So I'll select the group, tap T for the text tool, click in the viewer, then under the edit menu, choose emoji and symbols. And then I'll just use this little white square here. You can find it down near the bottom, but I have it here in my frequently used. Double click that. And then what I'll do over in the format tab is I want a bunch of them. So I'll copy it. You could just tap it over and over again, but I'll copy it and Command V to paste. I'll copy it again, Command V to paste, copy again, paste. And each time I'm getting, doubling the number I'm getting. And that should be enough. Great. So I've got all of these little symbols here. It's actually a text object. I can increase the font size make a little bigger, and I can decrease the tracking so that they overlap with each other. Obviously, they're way too long here, but in the Layout tab, I can change the Layout method from Type to Paragraph, and then I'll adjust the right margin way back here. And if we double-click right here in the viewer, you can adjust that right margin in order to adjust how many lines we have. It's a little bit too much, so I'm going to take some of these out of here. There we go, something like that. And let's also go to the Appearance tab and just change that color to black to be similar to what we were looking at before. 
So here's a way that we can have multiple lines of text. You could publish this right margin so that you could adjust how wide this whole thing is. And you could also publish, let's deselect it and select it again, the line spacing to adjust how close they are. And of course, you could publish the scale or the font size in order to increase that size. And that's all great. And that starts to get us there. Now, how do you animate that? Well, with text, let's go to Behaviors, Text Animation, Sequence Text. And we'll move to about here, tap O to trim it. Uh, we're going to start with uh, Opacity and reduce Opacity to zero and sequence from zero opacity. So now we can see this Animate On. And we're getting closer here. That's great. The only thing is here with this, I want to be able to adjust how many lines you draw, number one. And number two is I want to adjust where the beginning starts. And this is where things start to get a little bit complicated. And I really could not find a way using the text object to make this stop at another point. The ending offset does not work the same way as it does with a paint stroke. The ending offset just changes how quickly all of this writes on. It doesn't change how much of it writes on. So that's not going to work for us in this case. You can also change the animation from oh. character to custom and then use keyframes for the starting and ending. And then you could adjust the ending here. We'll put the ending at 100%. And then the starting we could put at a different value, let's say, see, depending on where this comes in, let's say 35%. But the problem here is you can't publish a keyframed value. You can publish a value, but not a value once you've keyframed it. So let's say we start with starting at zero, set a keyframe. And then by the end of this, we only want to draw on, let's say, three lines like that. So now it draws on three lines. And if you could publish that keyframe value and adjust it, that'd be great, but you can't. And to be clear, you can publish that parameter, but you can't adjust it in Final Cut Pro and still have it be a keyframe at that point in time. So that brings us to the replicator. So I'm going to delete this text object, play it at the beginning, R for the rectangle tool, hold the shift key down, draw the rectangle out, escape, change it to a fill, no outline. Let's make that black. We'll go to its properties and reset its position parameter. Press L to replicate it. And now we have these boxes, but we can change the number of columns to make them overlap for a solid line. And let's reduce the number of rows. And now we're starting to have something that we can work with where we've got multiple lines. Let's animate them with a replicator behavior, the sequence replicator behavior. I'll trim that. We want to animate its opacity, much like we did with the sequence text behavior. And we're going to go from 0% opacity. And now if we animate it, it doesn't look right because it's animating from the center. So we want to go back to the replicator tab and change the origin to the upper left. And then we also want to build by row. So now if we play that through, it animates on by row. And we can change the length of this. Make it go a little slower so you can see it animate on. And now we're getting somewhere. But once again, the trick is how do you make it adjustable in Final Cut Pro so you can draw on fewer lines to a specific stopping point because a sentence could stop anywhere in the middle. And I also want to be able to start it later because often sentences or paragraphs are indented in text. And the sequence replicator behavior doesn't have that kind of offset to let you do that. So, so here's kind of the trick that I figured out. What I did for the replicator is I changed the color mode from original to colorize. And the color doesn't really matter here. The key is the opacity gradient. So if I move this first tag over and put a tag before it and make that one black, which is zero opacity, notice it now fades in. By the same token, if I add another tag towards the end, that's full opacity, and one more at the very end, that's fully black, we see it kind of fade out at the end. So if we could put these tags really close to each other, 
right now they're still kind of fading in, but if they're really, really close together, they wouldn't fade in. And if you could move them together, you could adjust where this starts and ends. So I'm gonna jump to the actual project here to show you what I did. I took those gradients, if we select the replicator, and I linked them to each other. I linked the first two to each other and the second two to each other. So they linked the starting gradient and the ending gradient. I linked their locations to each other and you can see with the end gradient, there's a slight offset that keeps them a little bit separated from each other. So when you move one of them, the other one will move. If I select the replicator and we look at these and I select this first one and I adjust its location, notice how uh, we don't, we see it moving, but what's happening is both the black one and the white one, zero opacity and full opacity right next to each other and they're moving together because they're linked together. And then I publish that location. So if I go to my project for the published parameters, I renamed it uh, start and end. So here's the start and here's the end. And you can adjust exactly how long this will be and needs to be for your text. Now, one other thing I had to do here, if we go back to the replicator and look at the, let's look at the link again for the rectangle, you'll notice I don't have an offset for the starting one. And that's because when I did set an offset, it didn't work correctly. It just would not work correctly. If I put in minus 0.1 here, and then I try to adjust the starting offset, you'll see it goes crazy. So I'm gonna undo that, make sure we're back where we were, yeah. So what I did instead is I added a mask here. If I turn that mask off, you'll notice because there is no offset on the beginning for that link, we're a little bit off here and there was no way to get that starting to match. So I added a rectangle mask at the beginning of this, kind of chops all that off. And that's hidden because it's all being driven by this on-screen control. So what we have now is the full ability to adjust the starting and end of exactly where we want these lines to begin and end. The rest of this is basically publishing all of the parameters you want to adjust, like the color and the thickness and the line spacing, et cetera. And then I linked a lot of the controls to this Kaleidotile filter so that you could control it as an on-screen control. Notice I've published the on-screen control for this Kaleidotile. And in Final Cut Pro, if you click right on the screen and drag, you can adjust the spread or the, it's really the kind of like the tracking, but the spread between the lines. And then if you click on an endpoint here, you can adjust how wide they go. And if you click anywhere in the middle, you can move them around. So you can adjust the, the width, height, and position using the on-screen control. So here in Final Cut Pro, I have this newspaper article and I want to highlight something. I've used a ripple punch in in order just to zoom in on it. You can of course do this manually by setting keyframes, but I just like to use RT punch ins. It makes it fast and easy to do. And I want to highlight this sentence here that is indented at the beginning and the end. So what I'll do is I'll tap I to set an endpoint. In my RT markups here, I'll select the highlight multi-line, press Q. And this is what it looks like by default. But since we have this nice on-screen control, I can drag it down. I want it to start about there. In the title inspector for the published parameters, I'm gonna reduce the line width to pretty much match the text right here. Get that about where I want. Notice I'm lining up along the bottom of the part I want to handle here. And then I'm gonna drag down because it keeps that bottom still. And there, I've highlighted exactly what I want, and since I'm centered, if I drag out now, I should pretty much get right where I want. So that's what I want highlighted, but I want to change the beginning and the ending. So I'll move in the start. And by the way, if you use the option key held on the value field, you can do it by gearing it down and make it go much slower. And then I'll do the same with the end. I'll move it close, then use the option key to gear it down to get exactly the part highlighted that I want. And very quickly, without stacking multiple copies of a title, we're able to highlight just that particular area. And of course, you can change the, the color of the highlight and its opacity and its blend mode. Try different things out to find something that you like. But I try to make the defaults pretty close to what you'd want to use. 
Finally, I want to give you a little tip for extending a bunch of titles at the same time. And this is not specific to RT markups or RT punch-ins or anything, but anytime you stack a bunch of title objects, sometimes you need to adjust their timing. So here we have got a punch-in on the top of this uh, article. We've got several different markups that circle something, scribble something out. And then I have part of RT punch-ins is panning down and scribbling something out there. But let's say I want this whole thing to extend to the end of this here. How, how do I do that? Well, you can, you know, of course, drag each one out or select each edit point and press Shift X to move to the playhead. But there's a better way. So what I'm going to do is, let's say I just want him to stop there. I'll go right to the end there. I'm going to press S to turn on the skimmer. You don't have to do this with the skimmer, but I think it's the fastest way. Move right to where you're touching all of those. Press the left bracket key, which will select all of them at once. Move the cursor out of the timeline so you no longer have the skimmer active, and then press Shift X, and that will move them all at once to the end. And now you have that animation extend right to the end before it fades out. We'd love to know your thoughts. Please leave us a comment below. We'll see you next time here on MacBrace Studio.